Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. In this video, we're discussing what are your tax liabilities when you're a remote software developer. Is it better for you to become a full-time employee somewhere or remain a contractor or maybe even create a company of your own? What's the best way for you to save taxes based on your current income bracket? These are things that I've learned over the past few years by spending a lot of money on CAs and realizing that I was paying too much in taxes when I could save taxes legally based on the policies that the government has made for freelancers and for companies. So with that, let's get right into the video. So when you join a company remotely, you're usually given the option to either join as a full-time employee or join as a contractor. If you choose to join as a full-time employee, most probably what will happen is you'll get hired on paper by an Indian company. There are companies out there like remote.com or deal.com that provide these services to companies in the US for them to hire people all around the world. So you will be an employee of remote and remote will have that US based company as a client and your tax liabilities basically remain the same as they would if you were working in a full-time job. And the way to calculate taxes there is pretty simple. Uh, you have an income and you have to pay 30% taxes on all your income above 10 lakh rupees. And then there's a PF component that's non-taxable. You can save some more based on insurance and the EFTs that you're doing in a year. But all in all, you're mostly paying close to 25 to 30% in taxes if you're above a certain income level. And this is how I started freelancing as well. And I realized very soon that there are government policies out there that let you save a lot of money if you're not a full-time employee on paper. So let's discuss what that means. When you're a full-time employee, you get some benefits like insurance and then there are some labor laws that affect you. So a company cannot really kick you out without giving you some sort of severance or a notice period. So those are the benefits of being a full-time employee. Sir. But if there's something that the current layoffs and the market has shown us right now, it doesn't really matter if you're a full-time employee. When the time is bad, the probability of you getting laid off is basically the same. Doesn't really matter if you're a full-time employee or a contractor. And so even though it might feel like being a freelancer is not the most stable job in the world, uh, I sort of disagree. And I feel that the pros outweigh the cons by a lot here. And I'll show you how. When you're a freelancer, so you're not a full-time employee somewhere, the way that you get money is that you invoice the company in the US and then they send you a USD wire transfer into your Indian bank account. And if you're making less than 50 lakh rupees a year, there's a law called 44 ADA that you can take benefit of and pay taxes only on 50% of your income. So if you're earning 50 lakh rupees, you only have to pay taxes as if you were earning 25 lakh rupees in a year. That's already a huge saving and it gets even better as you earn more and more. But when you're starting out, most probably you're making somewhere like 30, 40, 50 lakh rupees in a year. The best thing to do is to use 44 ADA and pay taxes on only 50% of your income. The other two benefits here are that you're most probably getting paid in US dollars. So your salary is pegged to USD. Historically, INR has depreciated over US dollars. And hence, if you were getting a salary in, in INR or if you were a full-time employee, what would happen is that your US dollar income every month would probably depreciate. So if you were making $20,000 a month, you'll start to make $19,000 a month as time goes by because your INR salary remains the same, but the amount of money that you're earning in US dollars, or if you want to convert this INR amount into US dollars, you won't get as many dollars for your INR because rupee depreciates over dollar. This is one of the reasons that companies create back offices in India. When I was at Goldman, I was making 30 lakh rupees a year. And if I would get a 10% increment, it would go up to 33 lakh rupees. But a lot of times in US dollar terms, it might just go down. And hence, it's the best to always keep your salary pegged to US dollars. The dollar is the global reserve currency at least at the moment and there are speculations and reasons around why that might change in the future but right now the rupee is depreciating really fast so if you have an option always keep your salary pegged to us dollars now let's say your business is doing great and you're making more than 50 lakh rupees a year what can you do now to save taxes now 44 ada does not apply to you anymore but you can still show expenses and only pay taxes on the net income that you get so things like buying laptop or if you're going to visit your company in the us all of these will be counted as expenses so if you made one cr in a year and you ended up spending 20 lakh rupees on your business you only have to pay taxes on the remaining 80 lakh rupees so it's not as lucrative as 44 ada but if you have expenses if your expenses are more than 50 percent then in that case it is you're only paying taxes on the net amount of money that you make in the end compared to if you were working full-time somewhere, you don't get any depreciation savings or expenses that you can show. You pay taxes basically on your full income. The third way, uh, this is something I haven't done uh, and I might not do in the future as well. But what you can do is you can create a company in a country that, that has very low taxes or almost zero taxes. For example, Singapore and Dubai are two companies that have really low taxes and the company that you're billing in the US doesn't really care. All they need is like a tax identifier number. It doesn't matter if it's an Indian company, an Indian bank card of an individual or if it's a Dubai-based company. So what you can do is create a company in Dubai and get all your income there. The benefits here are that one, your money always remains pegged to US dollars because AED, the currency of the buy, is pegged to USD. So you never really receive any hit of rupee depreciating over time. If you're getting your money in India, you can't keep your money in US dollars for more than two months. You eventually have to convert it into INR. And the process of converting it back into US dollars is very tedious. You can only convert up to 125k US dollars worth of Indian rupee. The government makes it really hard for you to keep your money pegged in US dollars. And hence, if you have a company that's not based out of India, it's a decent way for you to one, save a lot in taxes and two, keep your money pegged to the US dollar. Again, I don't do this. Uh, I don't recommend this.
is this also only works if you're making a lot of money because the cost of setting up a company in these countries is pretty high. So there are pros and cons, but given a choice, I would probably never open a company in a different country unless I did not have any other option. Last but not the least, and this is probably the shadiest way to get money if you're working as a freelancer from India, is to get your income in USDC or some token that's back to US dollars. There are a lot of downsides to this approach and there are probably more downsides than upsides. Basically what you're doing is you're giving out a wallet address to the company and the company is not really giving you US dollars. They're giving you a token that's backed to US dollars. And eventually you receive this token or USDC into a decentralized wallet address of yours. The way to convert that into INR is where the shady bit comes in. It's very hard for you to prove what kind of income this is and where this money came from. So you might have to pay crypto gain taxes on this income, which is basically a flat 30%. And also you never when a token like USDT or USDC depegs from the dollar. It has happened in the past that stable coins have depegged and when they do, you lose basically all that income and goes down to zero. And when that happens, you basically lose all that income and it goes down to zero. So again, I don't recommend this at all, but I know people who do this. And the benefit is that you can move to a different country and then convert this money into fiat. And if that country has 0% taxes on crypto gains, for example, Dubai, then you're basically paying no taxes. Also, your money is pegged to the dollar, which is great. And the best part is this is completely decentralized. There's no bank that can take your money. Although these state Stable coins are usually centralized and hence if the government feels that you're doing something shady, there are ways for them to block this money. But I don't think the Indian government is there yet. I'm sure they will be in a few years. But right now, a lot of people in India are doing this. As I said, this is the shadiest of it all. I would not recommend it. Not just for its shadiness, but also if the token depegs at all, you end up losing a lot of money, which I don't think is worth it. So that's it. Those are the four ways that you can save money and bill your clients when you're working as a freelancer or a remote developer from India. Let me know in the comments if you know other ways of saving taxes. And if you want me to make more videos on remote work, What's your work-life balance like? How stable are these jobs? Do I have to work in the US time zone? Let me know in the comments and I'll make a detailed video on that. With that, let's end the video and I'll see you in the next one.